Hello everyone, Genki here, and today we're going to see if I can beat Pokemon Shining Pearl with only Leafeon. Leafeon is the grass type evolution. It has a 525 base stat total. Unlike its counterpart Glaceon, Leafeon is obviously a physical attacker, with its 110 base attack versus 60 base special attack. However, more importantly, Leafeon is very defensive. 130 base defense. 65 base HP and 65 base defense is still good, but it just means we'll need to be more worried about stuff like Flamethrower rather than Fire Punch. By level up, Leafeon gets a mixture of physical and special moves. It gets Razor Leaf when it evolves, and I feel that we'll be relying on it until we get access to Leaf Blade. Also, Sword Stance by level up is huge, but at level 45, will most likely already have access to the TM for Sword Stance. And speaking of TMs, Leafeon gets a lot of type coverage. Iron Tail, Dig, Aerial Ace, and X Scissor. I don't think we'll need Shadow Ball, but it's there if we need it. Let's go over the rules. I can only use Leafeon in battle. No items in battle, only held items, items outside combat are allowed. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's begin. We start by transferring in a Leafeon through Pokemon Home. And in an Adamon. You could probably guess why. He's Jolly Nature, so more speed, less special attack. His ability is Leaf Guard, so no status selection in harsh sunlight. I don't think we'll ever use that. What we will use though, is the gift from beating these two school kids. The team for workup. This will be our go-to setup move until Sword Dance. Time to battle Barry. Barry leads with Starly, who decided to spam Quick Attack, the second one getting a crit. However, Starly was a 2 KO tackle. For a starter, I gave Barry Chimchar, so we will continue to use Tackle, our second tackle getting a crit, but I don't think that mattered much, as Chimchar only spammed Leer. It went down to our third tackle. On to the first gym. We set up a single workup against Geodude before one shining at Razor Leaf. Onyx survived Razor Leaf thanks to Sturdy. This caused Rourke to use a potion, but Onyx went down. The EXP from Onyx caused Adamon to hit level 11, so he now has a chance to disobey us, which he did on the first turn against Kranidos, who decided to go for Leer. Thankfully, Adamon landed his next attack, one shining Kranidos. We can now head back to Jubilife, and then up to the Valley Wind Works, we hit the battle with Commander Mars. Mars leads the Zubat, who four times resists grass. Adamo rarely listening to us didn't help either. The Zubat for some reason liked the spam Supersonic, and then when it landed, you turned into Brugly. This gave us a chance to set up work up. Somehow, Adamo listened to us three turns in a row, before Zubat could switch out. This caused Razor Leaf to take Brugly to below half and activates Ornberry. It was still a 2k though. Zubat was looking like a 2k with quick attack, but we didn't get good luck and went down. Zubat was almost a one shot, but that was at plus 3, so I decided to do some grinding. Also, I taught Adam on Rock Smash. The 50% chance to drop our opponent's defense would probably be more useful than trying to set up 3 workups. At level 17, after over 2 hours of attempts, we got this run. We managed to get off a workout first turn, but Zubat landed in Supersonic. Adamon then hit himself in Confusion, allowing Zubat to go for U-Turn. Against Perugly, we got some bad luck, and Perugly even erased our attack buff with Growl. However, Rock Smash still did a third, and got the defense drop, causing our second Rock Smash to finish off Perugly. Though, this means we were facing Zubat with a quarter health. Our best attack was still quick attack. Zubat decided to confuse us again, and its U-turn did 8 HP and damage. But then it switched to Astonish, which did 2 HP. During this, Adamon pushed through his disobedience and confusion and landed 3 quick attacks, giving us the win with only 8 HP remaining. We cannot have to return to Forest and then turn to city, where we challenge the grass gym. You know, 
if you asked me what the hardest gym of this run was, you would not expect me to say the grass gym. And here's the thing, it's only because of disobedience. We would have plowed through this gym otherwise. Grass resists itself, and Pokemon that are part poison resist Rock Smash. Oh, and while facing the gym trainers, I had item alert Leech Seed over Quick Attack, because I thought it would be useful in the long run. I regret that decision. Grass Pokemon are immune to Leech Seed. On to the battle with Gardenia. Truby decided to start the battle with Safeguard, so he managed to gain a free workup. It however then went for Dazzling Gleam, doing 10 HP and damage. We only have 65 HP total. Truby was thankfully at 2 KO with Rock Smash. But we were only at 3rd for Turtwig, who, guess what? As reflect. Yeah, time to grind. Between grinding and retrying Gardenia, I discovered that Razor Leaf did more damage than Rock Smash, though only a little. At level 23, we set up two workups against Truby, who spent some time setting up growth, so its Dazzling Gleam took Adam onto a third, activating our Orenberry. At plus two though, it was a one shot Razor Leaf. Adamon decided not to attack Turtwig first turn, so it got the set of Reflect. Adamon then for some reason listened, and set up Workup, twice in a row. Though at plus 4, Turtwig was still to a KO thanks to Reflect. We finally made the Roserade, who 4 times resist Razor Leaf, and just normal resist Rock Smash. You see why I regret getting rid of Quick Attack? Also, despite it being resisted, Roserade's Grass Knot still hits like a truck. That was only 15 HP though. Here's an attempt at level 26 with 45 HP remaining. A single Grass Knot did 18 HP in damage. Roserade was a 4 KO from our plus 3 Rock Smash. 3 hits if we can get the defense drop. We kept losing and losing to the point I decided to explore the underground. My main goal was to get the Meadow Plate, to improve Razor Leaf, but I ended up using the Underground to grind out Gastrodons for levels. We could never find the Meadow Plate, but we did find the Dread Plate and the Pixie Plate. Eventually, at level 31, after being stuck on Gardenia for 4 hours, I decided to cheat. I transferred Adamon back to my main account, so we could take a visit to the Move Reminder. I was thinking about just having Adamon relearn a quick attack, but I decided on bite instead. More damage plus a chance to flinch. Despite being level 31 though, I still had Adamon set up 3 workups. Bite then one shot Ruby, and activated first turn against Churchwick, who was also a one shot. Against Roserade, we were still in green health, and still had our Ornberry, so we were able to tank a couple grass knots before Adamon finally listened and landed Bite, which was a one shot. Now, you might be thinking the run gets easy from here. Well, no. It gets easier, but not easy. With Adamon at level 31, he's still in disobedience range. With two badges, Traded Pokemon will only obey up to level 30. So we have to deal with two more gems with the disobedient Leafeon. First though we have to deal with Commander Jupiter in Team Galactic Building. Her Zubat doesn't have U-Turn. It has something worse, Poison Fang. Poison Fang has a chance to badly poison his target. That means the poison will do more damage each turn. We can't have that. The Zubat though goes down easily to a plus one bite. Then our camp's gonna take. Its flamethrower is actually bearable. The problem arises when it stacks flamethrower with poison from poison gas. This battle thankfully did not take that many attempts. We got confused by Zubat and got hit with one poison fang, but Zubat went down. Against Skunk Tank, we landed a rock smash first turn, taking Skunk Tank to just above half health. No defense drop, but we did dodge Skunk Tank's poison gas. Adamon then landed a second rock smash in a row, taking Skunk Tank to a sliver getting a defense drop, and activating Skunk Tank's Citrus Berry. 
Skull King somehow missed a second poison gas. But as I don't refuse to attack, Skull King went for flamethrower, which I crit. Taking Adamo to below half health. Thankfully, the following turn, Adamo listened and landed a final hit on Skull Tank. We can now head out Sackling Road and then the Heart Hump City, where we have a battle with Barry. We set up a work against Starly, who decided to go for double team. We then land on a bite, which one shot Starly. Next is Monferno. Adamon listened and landed on a rock smash, getting a defense drop. That's three times Adamon has listened in a row. Monferno's flame wheel then did a quarter. However, Adamon landed a second rock smash, taking out Monferno. Weasel was an easy KO with Rage Relief, so last was Roselia. Adamon decided not to listen, but Roselia only went for a weak grass knot. It went down the bite the next turn. Bellstone City is next, but first I grabbed the fist plate to Bruce Rock Smash. It was then I remembered I dug up the dread plate, which boosts dark moves, like bite. In Veilstone City, we bought the team for Swords Dance, but I also went down the route towards Pastoria City, picking up the teams for Dig and Aerial Ace. However, I only had Adam on Lord Swords Dance before challenging the next gym. Adam on decided not to listen first turn, as Metatite set up Bulk Up. He didn't listen and set up Swords Dance the following turn. However, Metatite managed to get in two Drain Punches, taking Adam on to almost half before going down to Rage Relief. Machoke, on the other hand, was a quick one shot, so Adam on was facing Lucario with green health. Adam on went first, but decided not to listen as Lucari went for Screech. However, Adamon then listened and landed his Rock Smash, which surprisingly one-shot Lucari. That was a first try victory by the way. With nothing in between, it's immediately time for the Water Gym. This one actually took a few tries. Gyarados has Intimidate and Super Effective Ice Fang, which does a lot of damage. Sword Stance now only boosted Adamon to plus one but that made Razor Leaf almost a one shot. Maybe if we can get a few more levels, we can quickly get rid of Gyarados. So I battle all the trainers and train underground. We battled Wake multiple times, but then at level 40, we got this attempt. Adamant listened twice in a row, getting off a sword stance and then a Razor Leaf. However, Gyarados survived the Razor Leaf with the sliver. This caused Wake to use a super potion, but then Adamon listened for a third turn in a row and took out Gyarados. That's not all. Adamon did not dissipate at all, taking out both Quaxar and Floatzel instantly. Adamon will now finally listen to all of our orders. We are free. With four badges, we have to battle Barry. Starly's Quick Claw activated first turn, but it went for double team. Starly was a one shot fight. We went for Rock Smash against Monferno, who survived in red health. It went for Flame Wheel, doing a quarter of Adamon's health. Monferno went down the next turn. Last are Weasel and Rosalia, who were both one shots. We now head towards Celestic Town, where we have to talk to Cynthia's grandma before we can challenge the next gym. We start with the Swords Dance, as Drifflin went for Fly. We couldn't attack, so I had Adamon use the second Swords Dance. Drifloom's fly didn't do that much damage, as we of course one shot of fight. We did take some damage from Aftermath though. Gengar was also a one shot fight, but then it's Curse Bite activated, disabling bite. We had to go for Razor Leaf and Nimbus Magius, but I don't think that mattered because at plus 4, both moves were guaranteed one shots. Off to Canleaf City, where we have another battle with Barry. Barry now leads with Stravia, who has Intimidate. So we had to set up two Sword Stances. At the same time, Stravia set up Double Team and attacked with Endeavor, taking Adamant to under 2 thirds HP. Stravia was a one shot fight. Heracross was a current one shot with Rage Relief. Monferno still survived Rock Smash, and its Flame Wheel took Adamant to low yellow health. It went down the next turn. Last are Breezel and Rosalia, who were both still one shots. Time for the Steel Gym. We set up two Swords Dances, as Bronzer went for Trick Room and Confuse Ray. 
Bronzor also set up Sandstorm before we took it out with a single bite. Since Trickrum was still up, Steelix outsped, but used its resistant Thunderfang, doing practically no damage. As we went for Razor Leaf, which Steelix survived in yellow health. Hoping Byron used a potion, which he didn't, I had Adamon set up a third store stance. Byron's Trick Room then ended, allowing Adamon to outspeed and finish off Steelix. Last is Bastion. It's directed crit Razor Leaf thanks to Sturdy, but it only went for Iron Defense, so it went down. We now have to investigate the lakes, but as usual, nothing exciting happened. So it's off to Snowpoint City, where we pick up the leftovers before challenging the next gym. For the battle, we finally top Adam on Area Lace. We set up two sword stances, as Snowbird went for two avalanches, doing a third of Adamon's health. Snowbird was then a one shot with Area Lace, as was Metacham. Sneasel was a one shot with Rock Smash, leaving only Obama Snow, who was a one shot with Area Lace. We now have to infiltrate Team Galactic Headquarters, where we have to battle with Cyrus. We set up a Sword Stance as Murkrow went for Taunt. I guess we'll have to deal with just plus two then. Murkrow was a one shot with Aerial Ace. Golbat was a crit one shot with Aerial Ace, so last is Neasel, who was a one shot with Rock Smash. We're now off to Mount Cornet, where we have to battle Mars and Jupiter with Fairy. I had Adamant go for Leaf Blade into Mars's Bronze Ore. But it only did a third, allowing it to set reflect. I then had Adamon set up a sword stance, which allowed his next leaf blade to finish off Mars' bronze ore. This set up Rugly, who was a one shot. Various munchlacks during this have been attacking Jupiter's bronze ore. Its second bite getting a crit, taking bronze ore to red health. Last on Mars' team is Golbat, who survived Aerial Ace with above half health. Various munchlacks though, Finished off Jupiter's Bronze Ore. This sent out Skunk Tank. I decided to have Adamo go for Dig, which wants out Skunk Tank. Various Munchlax on the other hand have been going for Bias Slam and the Mars' Golbat, and took it out with two hits. But not before Golbat could get off a Haze, erasing our Swords Dances. Last is Jupiter's Golbat. It was a 3 carry from two air releases and a Bias Slam. Time for Cyrus. We set up a sword stance against Honchkrow, who went for Defog. Honchkrow then surviving Air Lace and went for Air Cutter, which got a crit, doing over half of Adamon's health. It went down the next turn though. This brought out Crobat, who also survived Air Lace. This set out the set of Tailwind. The Tailwind caused Crobat to go first and do some damage with Cross Poison before going down. Next out is Gyarados, so our attack is down to plus one from Intimidate. It did big damage to Ice Fang, and also survived Leaf Blade with a Sliver. Knowing Cyrus would use his 4 store, I had Adamon set up a second store stance. Also, Crobat's Tailwind then ended, so we quickly took out Gyarados. Last is Weevil, who was a one shot from Leaf Blade. With the world saved, it's time for the final gym. We set up a store stance as Raichu went for Nuzzle, paralyzing Adamon. Raichu for some reason then went for a second Nuzzle. But went down to a single Leaf Blade. Ambipomp did some damage with double hit, but was a one shot. Adron somehow still outsped Octillery, who was of course a one shot, so all that remained was Luxray. Luxray went for Ice Fang, but it was a one shot. We could not hit the Pokemon League, but first we have our final battle with Barry. Straptor is first, so our attack is now from Intimidate. We started with two Sword Stances. As Dractor went for Pluck and then U-Turn, switching into Infernape. However, Adamant outspent Infernape, who went down to a single Aerial Ace. This brought back out Dractor, who survived our Aerial Ace thanks to his Focus Sash. This allowed it to go for Pluck, taking Adamant to below half, but it went down the next turn. Volta was an easy one shot with Leaf Blade. Against Snorlax, Leaf Blade got a crit, so it was a one shot. Heracross was a one shot from our 4 times super effective Aerial Ace, leaving only Roserade, who was a one shot with Aerial Ace. Time for the Elite Four. We swept through Aaron's team with Aerial Ace. However, for Drapion, we went for Dig. For Bertha, we set up a single Sword Dance. X Waxire went for Toxic. We had a Patchy Bear though. 
Her team was a sweep of Leaf Blade. Now, it's time for Flint. I had to do this battle twice, and not for the reason you think. For the first battle, we managed to set up two sword stances, as Rapidash used Flame Charge and missed its hypnosis. Rapidash then missed hypnosis a second time, as we went for Dig, which watch out Rapidash. Rapidash's Flame Body did activate though, so Adamant was not burned. Also, we did not have leftovers equipped, because I had Adamant holding a chest of berry. The attack drop from the burn caused Lopunny to survive Leaf Blade and do some damage with Fire Punch. I knew Flint would use his 4 store, so I had Adamant set up a third store stance before taking out Lopun. Adamant then healed his own burn thanks to friendship. Steelix was the easy one shot with Leaf Blade. Driftlin was a one shot with Aerial Ace, so it lasted Infernape. Unlike Berries, Flint's Infernape went first and went for Fire Punch, but Adamant survived the hit on 1 HP thanks to friendship, allowing him to use Aerial Ace. Flint's Infernape has a Focus Sash, so it survived the hit. However, Flint always goes for a potion the next turn, so that one more Aerial Ace finished off Infernape. I love the friendship mechanic in this game, but that was ridiculous. Round 2. This time, we still set up two sword stances, but instead of hypnosis, Rapidash went for poison jab, so Adamant was in yellow health when we went for dig. Thankfully though, Adamant was still holding leftovers. Rapidash was still a one shot, but this time, Flame Body did not activate. Lopunny and Steelix were both easy one shots. Driftlim survived air release though. It then went for Minimize, raising its evasiveness. I'm guessing Adamon and Driflum were speed tied because Driflum went first the next turn, setting up a second Minimize. However, Aerialis bypasses the accuracy check, so we took out Driflum before it could use Baton Pass. All that remained was Infernape, who we were now battling with green health. Its Fire Punch still took Adamon all the way to low yellow health, but at least this time, it feels better as we again took out Infernape with two aerial aces. Last on the E4 is Lucian. We went for two sword stances, as Mr. Rhyme said Reflect and use Psychic. Mr. Rhyme was a one shot with Leaf Blade. Manchamp was a one shot with Aerial Ace. Alakazam outsped and used Future Sight, but was a one shot. We went for Dig against Giraffarig, as it set up Trick Room. Giraffarig survives Aerial Ace and is immune to Leaf Blade. Dig at least allowed us to waste time on the Reflect and Trick Room. However, then Alakazam Future Sight hit, taking Adamon straight to a quarter. This caused Giraffarig Psychic to take Adamon to Red Health, but it went down to one more dig. Last up is Bronze Arm. Trick Room was still up, so it went first. However, Adamon survived the hit thanks to Friendship. Leaf Blade then only took Bronze Arm to low yellow health. It's Citrus Berry taking it back to half health. Thankfully, at this point, the Trick Room ended, so Bronze Long went down. Finally, it's time for Cynthia. We set up two Sword Stances, as Spiritomb took Adamon straight to 1 HP with a Shadow Ball and a Crit Dark Pulse. We only survived the hit thanks to Friendship. Spiritomb was then a one-shot Leaf Blade. Rosary was a one-shot Aerial Ace. Gastron and Milotic were both one shots with Leaf Blade. Lucario was a one shot with Dig, leaving only Garchomp. Leftovers had only healed us just back to barely half. However, Garchomp wasted its turn on Sword Stance, allowing Anon to go for Leaf Blade, one shot on Garchomp. We beat Pokemon Shining Pearl with only Leafy on. Thank you to everyone who watched this video, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.